Hey guys, it's Midnight Oz. Uh, I am currently on holidays, hence why my mic quality is kind of a bit shit right now, but there's something that I really wanted to talk about uh, in this video. I kind of just want to go a few things, uh, over a few things with Street Fighter VI that I think a lot of players should know uh, before they end up picking up the game, whether it be in the next beta or uh, when they drop into the full game that releases on June the 2nd. Uh, these are things that I've learned having played both of the betas. And I'll try and give as many tips as I can in the shortest period of time. Uh, the first thing I'm going to go through is uh, the training mode. <clears throat> I want to very quickly go over what this training mode can do. Uh, because this training mode is probably one of the best training modes we've seen inside of a video game. Uh, obviously, you've got save status, replay status. This is familiar to the Street Fighter V. Uh, command list, as expected, it shows classic and modern controls on how to perform all your special moves, super arts, unique attacks, throws, your common moves. Uh, which is like the game mechanics, and then assisted combos. So if you have assisted combos on, it will uh, show you what those assisted combos are. All right, uh, control settings, change of button layout, shortcut settings. This is stuff like restart battle save state, replay state on your uh, pad or your stick, uh, pressing your different function keys to do different things. Uh, options, change the game options, restore default settings. What they will do here now is that shortcut settings are not reverted. <clears throat> Uh, so that was something that was part of 5, whenever you said default settings, it would get rid of all your shortcuts, shortcuts will no longer be reverted. Environment settings, this is pretty much just where you start when you restart battle, what side are you on. Game speed setting is a new one, <clears throat> you can now slow down the game or completely pause the, pe the game state. So like this, the, game's now, the game state is now completely paused. Go here, game state slowed down. So this is good if you want to practice combos, practice reactions, things like that, slow down interactions, whatever you want to do. Uh, a new thing as well is player one, player two selects. So now you can completely change uh, the other person that's on the other side of the screen right from this section. You just go out of this menu and it instantly changes. There's basically no downtime now going backwards and forwards from training menu. You can now stay in training menu and this just works. Character specific settings, you can, at the moment, it's just Ryu with Dungeon Charge. You can just say if it's infinite, whatever, just to practice Dungeon shit. You can change the stage, you can revert changes. That's pretty standard stuff. Dummy controls. Uh, there's a few new things. Dummy, CPU, controlled by player two. Pretty standard. Behavior, crouch jump. Also standard. Counter. You can now always set it to counter hit. Always set it to punish counter. Punish counter being the new thing that whenever moves with. Now, you can make your moves always punish counter. Uh, and then set it up to random, and random, you can set up random so that it can favour something more than another option. So if I want to practice counter hits more, and maybe have punish counters, or no punish counters at all, I can set that up. Very intuitive. Extremely intuitive, in fact. Block. This is a new thing. No block, block all. This is pretty standard. Switch block. You can have it say standard block, crouch block only, so you can practice overheads. Block type, block, you can have it so that they will drive parry whenever you do a move. Also includes perfect parry. Uh, you can set it to random as well. That one doesn't have a uh, thing attached to it. Drive reversal, you can set it to active or random. Uh, you can also set the delay for drive reversal so that either he does it immediately or he does it after a certain amount of time. Right. Throw us, uh, activation count. Uh, so how many times the dummy will block before it actually does its reversal. So you can actually set up how long he blocks for. Throw escape, active and active, random. Recovery, recovered in place, recovered backwards, random. That's pretty standard. There's one more new one with block, and that's block count. So now you can actually set up the dummy to block a certain amount of hits. Oh, hang on, sorry. Set up a certain amount of hits before something else lands, right? I set it to three. Hang on, whoa. Set it to three. Set it to four. Whoops. Uh, let me see what I can do here for four. Something like that, right? You get the idea. Uh, recording settings. Now you have eight slots. You can have them automatically record or once you input a command. Uh, so if you go to here and you say start recording, it will not start recording until you input a command, right? Or it'll just happen automatically, okay? Um, you can also set it to the countdown, that's pretty standard, right? 
that is as it should be. You can delete recordings. You can now replay and you can start your replay recording. Um, this has also got your all your eight slots. Uh, you can have your info on or off if you have random recording so if you're practicing something like Andy Ezra or a certain punish and you don't want to see what recording is currently playing that's what that is and then you can repeat the replay this is pretty standard um now <clears throat> when it comes to reversal settings so this is now like uh your odd block on wake up shit like this uh you now have wake up but now you don't have to record it you can now pick what move it is right so you can say specifically what you want to do Hadouken Shuri you can light medium heavy OD uh, so you, any of the super arts, you can record slots if you have the recordings there. You can do common actions like do nothing, forward, backward, forward, dash, back, dash, drive, parry, drive, impact. There's a lot of customization as to what you can set as a recording. So for example, we can set uh, someone, and there's block reversal as well. There's reversal after damage. This is a really big one. This was not an option before. Reversal after damage did not exist. Now it exists. So now after he gets hit, I can simulate someone mashing their fucking drive impact like a madman. I will turn that on. You can set a delay. So now, after he gets hit, you can now practice that, right? It is all very, very, very cool. This is uh, probably one of the most fleshed out things we've seen. Vitality gauge, up down by 10%, recovery. This is a normal, normal drive gauge. You can set this to put someone in burnout. So now someone will stay in burnout. Um, you can set to refill. How many gauges do you have? Um, if you want to get to CA, drop your health. You get to CA because it's a health based mechanic. Uh, set B to refill as well. Um, screen display. This is also a really important one because uh, this has got a lot of information hidden away behind this. Uh, you've got the input display for player one, player two, both or just off. This is the really big one, frame meter. Gives you the frame meter. You can now specifically see everything about a move from the startup in green to the active frames in red to the recovery in blue. The grit yellow is the block stun and you can see exactly when you to recover. You can see if you recover after an opponent and it will tell you that that opponent is plus one. If you want to teach someone how to use frame data, this is the most like simple way to put it, right? Like stand medium punch. It started up in four frames, it had four active frames, it hit on the first active frame, so he entered block stun for 16 frames, we recovered after the active frames for 14 frames, and we recovered two frames after he did, so that he was plus two after we hit our button. God bless Ken. Uh, this is an extremely, extremely valuable feature, and I do not see why anyone should not use the frame meter in any situation. Uh, action timing, cancel timing, and the virtual controller. Uh, virtual controller is literally just putting inputs on the screen. Cancel timing is showing you how long you have to input a special move after. Okay, and then down the bottom left you'll see whenever I do moves, it'll tell me what move I successfully performed when it comes to special move. Right? So it'll tell you when you successfully do moves or not. Uh, that is a very important thing as well. And then simple training se settings. Despite being simple, there's also a lot of depth that goes into this. Um, these are all pre-made practices, okay? First of all, I'm going to start from the bottom. The frame meter and you, this will tell you frame data. This will explain to you frame data. It will tell you everything you need to know, and then it will ask you to display the frame meter. So if you don't understand, this is the best way to also get into it. Drive impact defense, punish practice, whiff punish practice, CPU practice, throw escape practice, offense pressure practice, anti-air and combo. These are all practices that the game has set up built in for you to practice things. Like anti-airs, they're a really big thing in games, right? I'm going to press anti-air practice, it'll ena automatically enable slots. And now we practice anti-airs, right? And that is it. And you just practice your anti-airs, right? It's just built-in anti-air training. Let's say drive impact defense, right? This is going to be an important thing because drive impact is very, very powerful. Practice defending against drive impact. It's not supposed to be super in-depth, but it is supposed to be simple training so people getting into the series are going to have an easier time understanding things, right? Like punishes and all this sort of stuff. And then just a standard CPU battle, okay? Um, 
this is all extremely important and I think it's super, super, super handy. Uh, the recordings are all automatically put into here. So if you don't want to have these recordings anymore, you can just reset your settings. It's as simple as that. Like, I want to go back and turn on my frame meter, done, all right? That is it. Uh, there's a few other things I want to cover on. Um, generally, for a lot of characters, uh, there's not actually a lot of plus frames happening in this game. Uh, Ken is the unique example that he has none, uh, but I can, hey, look at this, use my training room to look at a different character, like let's say Luke. Switch to Luke, hey, how fast is that, right? Now, you can have a look and see, minus two, minus three, plus one, minus five, minus two, minus three, minus five, but it has a lot of active frames, and then minus six, minus 13, and plus two. Yes, his forward heavy punch is plus two. Um, but you can see that a lot of these normals, unlike Street Fighter V, where uh, there were a lot of plus frame normals for you to draw off, there are not a lot of plus frame normals. Ryu is one of the best examples of having plus frame normals, being he's got, ah, correction, that's not plus. That's not plus either. That's not plus, that's not plus. I think I'm wrong. I am wrong. That is plus one though. Uh, but yeah, all this, it's not, hit the offense is not plus frame uh, measured. So people are like, oh, okay, how do you enforce pressure then outside of just having to do neutral, try and poke and then hit confirm stuff, right? Um, that's where, I'll switch back to Kang because he's my familiar character. Uh, that's where the new system mechanics come in, right? So, <clears throat> this is why I want to flow into Drive Rush from here. Drive Rush will automatically add plus four frames to any of your normals. So the thing that was minus two before, is now plus two. There are two ways to go into it, double tap after a button. This burns three bars of your drive meter. Or, while holding parry, double tap forward, this only drains one and then you go forward into your attack. Uh, the tip that I'd like to give here is that if you want to do an instant drive rush, you tap forward first and then hit the forward V skill. And then there's no parry star attached, it's just drive rush. Keep that in mind. But yeah, so uh, on top of that, uh, kind of in line with the no plus frames is that there's no three frame button. This is four frames, this is five frames, this is five frames, this is four frames. Every character in the game has a full frame button. Minus three or plus three is now the magic number in this game, okay? So, off this crouching mean punch, which Ken used to start all of his B&Bs off back in Street Fighter V, he now gets nothing, unless he gets his drive rush, okay? So drive rush is now the plus frame enabler, right? Off, off a lot of your buttons. Right, plus five. You can link into a lot of stuff. It'll require some experimentation from you, but there are definitely some combos you can get. That is often how you will extend your combos in this game. Will it burn a lot of resources if you want to get big combos? Yes, that is exactly right. They are, it will burn a lot of resources. Um, <clears throat> outside of that, you do have overdrive moves as well. Some special moves like uh, Ryu Hashigeki, uh, the heavier versions or Denjin will be plus on block, so there's ways for you to extend block pressure using your special moves. Um, some characters have wreckers, like Ken has this uh, Jinrai wrecker that he can uh, utilize to enforce high lows <clears throat> or do nothing out of and stagger the pressure off of that. There's different experimentation that you can do. <clears throat> The other system mechanics that we need to bring up and just quickly clear some myths about, right? Drive parry. This shit isn't actually as good as it seems. Um, I'm gonna get Ryu uh, do a after block. He's just gonna press medium punch, okay? Uh, this actually does not change the frame data at all, right? If I just block this, I am plus one because Ryu's medium punch is minus one. If I parry it, the frame data doesn't change. There's actually no change to the frame data here, okay? So just parrying shit does not actually get you any reward. You would have to perfect parry someone in order to get the plus frame advantage to punish things, okay? 
Now, the second myth is that uh, Drive Rush has recovery. Drive Rush has tw tw uh, what is that? 29 frames of recovery, right? Um, it's a lot of frames of recovery. However, uh, the really important note is that if you successfully parry something, then there is no recovery, right? So I'm gonna go, I'm actually gonna now set up recording. We're gonna go into our recording settings. We're gonna start a recording. This and then the other one is just <coughs> jump throw. Okay, this should this is broke just fine. All right. So now we're gonna replay the first one. Uh, ooh. How does it start? I think I need to press a button. <laughs> Sorry, this is actually the first time I've had to do this. So I'm going to quickly burn this. Uh, I'll start recording. So, Not good if you parry a jump in, you can tech the throw. Because you have no recovery, right? What? That's really important. But if you whiff it, Not good enough. then you get punished, okay? So if you can get a parry to whiff, that will put them into recovery frames, and then you can punish them. Um, if they parry something, then you cannot throw to punish counter because they will recover immediately once the block stun is done. But it doesn't change block stun. That's a really important note. <clears throat> the other note to remember about... Uh, uh, the last system mechanic, which is drive impact, is that drive impact can happen off any of your special cancelable normals. So buttons that cannot be special cancelled cannot go in the drive impact, which is done by heavy punch, heavy kick. Drive impact on its own causes a large amount of blowback. Uh, I'm going to get Ryu to stop uh, hitting shit on reversal. You are minus on block after a drive impact. Drive impact on normal hit. Everyone should know this, it knocks down punish counter or counter hit. It will put them into the crumble state, okay? Here's the important thing about uh, drive impact, is that when dealing with it on uh, an opponent's defense, right? So an opponent is using it defensively against you because it is frame one armor. It only has two hits. So often if your offense revolves around multiple hits or something into a special cancel when your opponent goes for DI you can actually set up block strings where if they reversal DI you can completely stop it okay so that's something really important is that not committing to anything too committal or something that can't be special cancelled or committing to a special move like a fireball uh, let me just pick this one right you will be able to blow through it uh, the only other way to blow through it is if you do something like um, any kind of super that can blow through the armor or for whatever you're doing so Like that, or simply break it with three hits, okay? You'll have to experiment with what your character can do. But there are different options, okay? There are different options to try and break through this shit. So, uh, keeping that in mind, often everyone is pretty much widely regarded that this is one of the best ways to go through drive impact. Just using your drive impact right back off special cancelable buttons. Uh, very, very safe way to go about it. Um, besides that, uh, other things to note is that in this game, uh, EX Firewalls, while they look like they are two hits, uh, this actually isn't the case. Uh, fireballs are, surprisingly, when they're done with EX, uh, they just win Fireball Wars. Okay, so... Ryu could have... Let's give an example, right? So... Ryu's got Denjin, okay? 
It doesn't win. Both have two hits, right? Both fireballs have two hits. Ryu's throwing Dejin, I'm throwing EX. Because mine's overdrive, mine just wins. And it still does two hits, okay? So that's a really important thing to know, is that if you want to win fireballs, spending bar on EX is absolutely a way to go about it, okay? Yes, it'll require you to spend your meter, but... It's a way to win Fireball Wars, especially against characters like Guile or Ryu, who have really good zoning capabilities with uh, their Hadouken Fireballs. Um, another really important thing that I need to point out is that anytime you use Drive Rush, Drive Impact, um, any of those two to start offense, scaling immediately kicks, kicks in the gear, okay? Especially off this, right? That actually knocked an extra 5% off the scaling, okay? So after four hits, I already hit 50%, okay? Um, especially after doing something like Drive Impact, uh, these can hurt, but depending on how it's used, these can also add additional scaling as well, especially if you start by successfully Drive Impacting something and then you go into a Drive Rush, it'll just cut a lot of scaling into your combos, right? Okay. Um, only other thing I can think of right now that's uh, really important to mention is how the supers work. This is the only other thing I can think of that is like one of the biggest tips that I can give. Um, level ones. I don't have time to play. Hush, Ken. Uh, level one supers, okay, can only come off. Oh, that's level one can only come off buttons raw, used raw. <clears throat> and that is basically it. Level 1 supers are very limited use. But say if you do something like... Or whatever combo filler. That's where you would use a level 1 super. Or for example... You can... One by combo ender. Level 2 can be done raw. It can be done off buttons can be done off EX special moves and that is it uh, and you'll have to check what what EX special moves it goes into stuff like EXDP doesn't work um, yeah, oh, the other thing to note about level 1 and level 2 supers is that these carry zero invincibility uh, uh, except for level 1's level 1's have strike invincibility but they removed the projectile invincibility on level 1 supers. So if you're using your level 1 super to try and blow through a fireball like this, uh, this does not work anymore. It's only for strikes. Uh, level 2 carry no invincibility at all. I haven't ever seen a level 2 beat something. Level 2s are purely for combos and combos only. Okay, Level 3s slash CAs are the best versions to use and are worth saving up in my opinion because the only thing that they have is... Well, the fact that they have everything. Uh, they've got complete invincibility on startup to everything. Um, they combo into your normal special moves, including Buttons Raw and Done Raw. Um, like, the use for CA is completely limited, limitless, right? So you can do stuff like your, like a buffer into your special, and then... You get CA, okay? So it's got very, very universal use when it comes to how you implement the CA, and on top of that, the CA scaling when you're at 20% health is absolutely nothing to be scoffed at. Um, so you can rack up some really serious damage when you apply this with uh, your drive rush or like a drive impact punish waiting? counter and things like that. And the other tips that I can give is uh, whiffing in this game is really bad. Uh, whiffing in this game is absolutely terrifying uh, because anytime something whiffs and you get a punish counter, players get to open you up for absolutely massive damage especially if you have something like for example ken is actually really good at uh punish countering with the stand header kick because you can keep it at any distance with the run into dp off of a punish counter all right a uh, really good character for it uh, to use him as an example um uh <clears throat> excuse me any time i want to bring up is burnout uh just quickly cover some myths regarding uh burnout 
So I'm going to set these to get burnt out. And burn out. Ooh. In Burnout, everything is now plus one block. You automatically get plus four on everything on block, right? So now all characters have legitimate pressure when it comes to anything. And some moves that were previously punishable before are now safe, okay? So now your characters get opened up to a lot of possibilities. Um, when you're in Burnout, obviously you can't DI Drive Impact back. So what is your defense against Drive Impact? Well, it's your level 1 super. If I get on block, uh, if I get him to do Shinku, level 1 super's armor break. That will just win automatically, okay? Uh, so that's another really big, uh, that's another important thing to remember. And that's about all I've got, honestly, when it comes to the initial tips that I've learned when it came to the beta. Uh, only other things that I can really think of is, like, when you're coming in to play this game, um, learn some basic combos, learn how Drive Rush works, um, and just get a feel for the game. This is a very different feeling Street Fighter V, but it's definitely one of the most fun Street Fighters ever. Like, this is probably the best Street Fighter we've seen, period, uh, in my opinion. And, um... Definitely stick to your fundamental skills, I think. While it's easy to get suckered into the dollies and bells of drive impact and drive rush and the system mechanics to overwhelm your opponent, good players are going to blow you up for it. So definitely add it to your fundamental skills rather than relying on it to win. Uh, that's pretty much all I got. Thank you for this extremely scuffed video, but I kind of wanted to get this out there. Peace. Round two. Fight. Come here. Come here. Come here.